gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Taunton High School, home of the Tigers, and tonight it plays host to the MIAA's South Sectional Semifinals in Division I. It's the second seed, Needham Rockets, and the third seed, Brockton Boxers, going at it. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, Brockton coming off a win against Quincy that at times seemed like the boxes were vulnerable and could be beaten. Yeah, it, there were times there, but they, they, they got it together. The coach talked talk to them at, and at halftime, and uh, they came out a little bit more intensity. Quincy got to give Quincy credit. They stayed right with the boxes until the fourth quarter, and the boxes somehow pulled out a win. Michael Clem in with Abu Kaba to take the opening tip off on the Tiger Paw. And Clem wins it. And, and Needham, excuse me, has opening possession. The Rockets have earned their way here. They were written off. A lot of people had them not getting past the seven, uh, the, excuse me, yeah, seven seeded New Bedford Whalers. And they thought this matchup was going to be the third matchup of the year between the, the Whalers and the Boxers. Well, Needham put those thoughts to rest with the 82 to 48 blowout victory, and Brockton's on the board first. It was Abu Kaba off the glass and in. Yeah, a nice post up by Abu Kaba. Brockton is the away team by virtue of being the lower seed, albeit by one. So they're wearing their visiting black jerseys. Counted in one for number 21, Thomas Shaughnessy, the senior at the line with the chance to put the Rockets on top. Three to two, should his free throw be successful. Brockton yeah. wearing their visiting black jerseys, red trim around the white numbers. Need them in their home whites with gold trim around the navy blue numbers. Yeah, Box has got to be careful on defense to stay with their men, especially when they get into the paint. Harris in for Abu Kaba. Kaba uncontested to the rim, no good. Abu Kaba, uh, Oak and Lowell, excuse me, down low. And coming away with it is Needham for the moment. Loose ball, Marcus Azor picks up the garbage. And Azor in for Oak and Lola from the charity stripe. His two, a couple of bounces off the rim, no good. Rebound to number 23, uh, excuse me, number 22, Brandon Monheimer. Three, no good, offensive board to Monheimer is good. Yeah, this, I heard this Rocket team got some good shooters on their squad, so Box is going to have to play a little bit closer when they shoot them from the outside. They can't constantly leave their, their man open outside to take that shot. Monheimer with five threes against the New Bedford Whalers. And now a steal for number four, William Dorian, who is being assaulted. I believe they're going to call a jump ball. Yeah, good call right there by the referees. Not a lot of body contact. Jerry's Harris to inbound for the boxers. To Oak and Lola on the baseline. Strong to the backboard and in. Yeah, nice job by Oak and Lola using his strength underneath. Just about two minutes into this first quarter. It's five to four. Rockets on top. Backdoor pass blocked away by Abu Kaba, who comes away with the ball. Kaba slowing up. Gives off to Oak and Lola. The big man for three is good! Yeah, nice shot by Oak and Lola. He asked for the ball. Kaba gave it to him and he took the shot. Nice three pointer. 7 5 boxers, 5.45 to go in the first quarter. This is Dorian over to Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy to Clem. Clem, the brother of the captain of the Rockets, the Lady Rockets basketball team. Amir Louis Charles called for the foul. Quick three is good from the corner for Brendan Monheimer. That was the wrong three there. Now Louis Charles, long two, no good. Open low offensive rebound to the Jerese, the assassin Harris. His floater is good. Wow, that was a nice shot, tough shot. He took the shot with his left hand and somehow made it. 
Nine to eight, Brockton on top. A three is no good. Rebound to Sonny Okinlola. Marcus Azor to the basket. Thought he was fouled on the way in, and now in wow. the back is going to be called on Abu Kaba. Yeah, I thought there was some contact too when Azor went up, no call. But the rest turned right around and called the uh, defensive foul on the boxes. Jalen Lee comes in for Louis Charles. Bigger body can also shoot the outside ball. This is Thomas Shaughnessy. All the way over to Monheimer, his three no good, Cobble with the rebound. Four and a half to go, 9-8. Marcus Azor to the basket is good. Yeah, nice job by Marcus. He did that the other night. Took it right to the hole. Now, Azor comes up with a steal. He's in alone. Oh, oh it's here we go. Footer. Marcus Azor makes the defensive play and puts an exclamation point with the dunk. Timeout, Rockets 4.09 to go in the first quarter. The six foot senior captain showing why he wears the C on his chest. And like I always say, Mad Dog, if you can produce some defense, the offensive points will come to you. And that's exactly what happened right there. Needham wasn't paying attention. Marcus Azor read the pass perfectly and took it right home. Well, what a first four minutes here in the MIAA. Division I South Sectional Semifinals. Worth noting, the last time we were in this gym was 2013. It's a long time ago. The start of Cardinal Spellman's Division Three championship run. Equally as crazy of an atmosphere with the Cardinal crazies. I don't think we've seen a crowd as coordinated as this Needham fan bases since the Cardinal Crazies You're right. wild run You're back in 2013. Exactly right. Need him Rocket fans up. Kaba comes up with a steal now. Abu Kaba, floater off the glass and in. Ooh, that was a tough shot with his left hand and he made it right off the glass like you said. Nice defensive play by Kaba. Adam Frundlich getting ready to come to the game for the Rockets. Now this is Cooper. Monheimer back to Cooper, his three no good, and it will trickle out of bounds. And a substitute for the Rockets. Frundlich in for Michael Clem. Yeah, that's good defense played by the boxes. Box of defense had their hands in his face when he took that shot. I thought he got a little piece of it. Harris thought about the quick three. Azor now to Kaba. Kaba to Jalen Lee. Driving baseline gets tripped up. And they're going to say he stepped out of bounds as he was falling to the ground. Rockets ball. Thomas Shaughnessy, the senior guard. Shaughnessy all the way in, floater off the backboard, no good. Azor's pass airmailed. Yeah, you don't see that happen too many times. Azor with the errant pass. They come few and far between. Of course, the ad adrenaline is flowing with both teams. You can tell they're both amped up. Tijon Darty into the game for Brockton. He replaces Okinola, so Brockton sending out their tallest member, 6'6", for Glenn Darty. He was second on the team behind Eldon Terry, who got the boot with about two weeks left in the regular season. Junior Montero is also going to come into the game for the Boxers. And Glenn Darty immediately called for a foul. It's going to be a hold. These Rockets, they don't stand around. They're constantly moving. Montero into the game for the Boxers. 
finish that finish. Offensive board off of the block. And now Jalen Lee comes away with it. Good defense by the boxes. Denying the Rocket player from scoring. Montero over to Caba for three. No good. Offensive board for Junior Montero. His floater no good. And another offensive foul. This one against Abu Kaba. That's the fifth foul against the Boxers. And we've got 2.13 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, they're probably going to have to take uh, Kaba out. They don't want him in any foul trouble. Okinola in for Kaba. One thing we've seen from the Boxers all year, Miles, a very deep bench. You're not losing much when you go to the quote unquote B team. Not at all. Pass out of play, a little bit too much mustard on it from Cooper. Yeah, so far this year, Brockton's bench has outshined most of the um, opponent's benches. If there was ever time to shine, it would be tonight. Montero give and go with Oak and Lola. Oak and Lola for three. Yes! It's good! The yes. big man, two and two from beyond the arc. And that gives the Boxers a 10 point lead. It's 18 to eight with 1.40 to go in the first quarter. Ooh, that's Okendola's second big shot from the outside. Brockton with relentless defense. Shaughnessy trying to shove off Jalen Lee. Now Shaughnessy in, floater good. Ooh, pretty finger roll by Shaughnessy showing his quickness. Kicked in. You got to call that a kickball off of yeah. William Dorian. Rebound to Jalen Lee. Up and down the court they go. Lee for Glenn Darty. He gets tied up and it's taken by Cooper. Now it's Cooper who travels oh, like with travel. it. And he's going to get called for it. Navon Reed in for Juice Harris. And Azor in for Jalen Lee. John Donovan will come in for Brennan Monheimer as the chess match continues. Definitely so. A lot of, lot of uh, subs in that whistle right there just before this uh, first quarter ends. 45 seconds to go. Navon Reed with it for Brockton. Off to Junior Montero. There's 10 on the shot clock. Azor over to Glenn Darty. In for Oak and Lola, who is fouled from behind. But big man had a lot of air under him. Push called against Will Cooper. And that's going to send in Matthew Smith, who had 25 points against the New Bedford Whalers. Montero in for Azor after a pick was set by Glenn Darty. Shot clock, game clock, or even might be a half second between them, so Brockton's gonna hold on for last shot of the quarter. It's Junior Montero with it. Now 10 seconds left. Montero driving inside. Out to Navon Reed. Needham comes away with it, but now Brockton gets it right back. Montero, three, is short. Out of play with one second on the clock. I think they're gonna let it slide. The buzzer's going to go. And we are at the end of the first quarter. It's 18 to 10, Brockton on top of Needham. Miles, only two words can describe this first quarter. Fast paced. Very fast paced, and, and what, why Brockton has the eight point lead is, is because of their defense. They got a lot of um, points on their defensive uh, steals, and um, they just have to settle down a little bit more when they have their half court offense set up, and um, they should be okay um, in this first half. But right now, it's very, everybody's tight out there, a lot of excitement. Needham's trying to run on uh, the same pace as Brockton is, um, and they've got some good shooters out there. They've been a, They've cooled down there in that end of that uh, first quarter, but they came out hot. The winner of this game has the absolute honor and privilege, to talk about a prize for getting to the South Sectional Final, to face the 20 and two 
Mansfield Hornets. And that game will be back here at Taunton High School on March 9th, which would be Friday at 7.45 p.m. If it's the boxers, we'll have it for you on BCA. Montero almost coming up with a steal there. Very intriguing other side of the bracket. Nobody surprised that Mansfield came out of it as they defeated Newton North by 20, 70 to 50. That game last night, Montero to the bucket, floater good. Nice job adjusting to the big man that was on him. Miles, you talk about a little revenge. The boxers think this is the year of all years. They would love to have a third consecutive chance to go with the Hornets. A three, no good for number 21. That's Thomas Shaughnessy. The Azor was very clearly fouled, and they're not going to call it. Come on, that was terrible call. Terrible call. Coach Bowen losing his mind. I don't blame him. That was a terrible call. And now they're going to give it to Brockton. And the, yeah, the this third ref, ref is 40 they, feet away from the yeah, play. Yeah, he was behind the play. How could he make the call? Well, at least they got, got together and got, and it, got right it right. In the end. Yes. Minus the third official that made the initial call. Oak and Lola to Azor, three, no good, but fouled beyond the arc. He'll be at the line for three shots, Shaughnessy. The rare three free throws for Marcus Azor. Smiles, the Mansfield Hornets defeating the Brockton Boxers back to back in their home gym, the Hornets Nest at Mansfield High School. This is the year, they're the top seed, they come in 20 and two. Brockton would love to get a piece of the Hornets. They sure would love to get a piece of the Hornets. Like you said, they've been stung by the Hornets twice. Pun Not intended. Excuse very, me? very good on the, the stung, the yeah. sting pun. <laughs> but yeah, as you know, they got to get by this uh, this uh, Hornets nest first. Azor, three of three at the line. 23 to 10, the score Brockton up by 13. And they're looking to put this game away early. Hopefully get some reserves in the later stages and save the legs for Friday's game. Oh, what a block by Glenn Darty out of play off of him, however. It was Will Cooper who got shut down. Yeah, great job by um, Darty and Okandola. This is what I like to call the jumbo set. Yeah, that's a, a travel. travel call. Yeah, good call. So the jumbo set for Brockton. Junior Montero, the quarterback of the football team. Glenn Darty, a wide receiver, and Sonny Okinola, a tight end, a defensive back. Yeah, Brockton needs a physical presence. And they've had it all year. Montero floater off oh. the glass and in. Nice drive to the left hand side. Took the shot sweetly off the glass by uh, Montero Jr. This is the second time we've seen the Rockets fan base this school year. Of course, the last time was in the Division I South Sectional Final in soccer. The Boxers won that one, one nothing to advance to the state tournament. Great. Now the Brockton fans come alive. Yeah, the chair for Azo's good defense on Shaughnessy. Step away, Jay, for Will Cooper. Yeah, the clock, 30 second clock was running down, and Cooper made the clutch shot. Azo with it. There's Needham calls for a travel. They're not going to get that call any day of the week. Now Azor in for Glenn Darty. Darty to the bucket off the glass. No good. Needham tipped the rebound to Oak and Lola. He goes strong to the backboard. No good. Will Cooper comes away with it, getting harassed by Oak and Lola. And Needham able to settle it down. Yes, yeah, shot just wouldn't fall for the boxes. Great, great effort by the boxes. The ball just wouldn't 
getting to that basket. Needham's gonna call a timeout here. 5.08 to go in the second quarter, 25 to 12. Brockton just north of doubling up the Rockets in the Division I South Sectional semifinal. A very fast paced first bit of this game, but finally starting to slow down and give us a chance to breathe. Yeah, because we were pretty hyped up in that first quarter and part of the second quarter. And uh, Box has got, just got to keep playing that tough defense on Needham. They're really making Needham work for their shots, and they just got to continue that throughout the game. They really can't let up on Needham because Needham's the type of team they showed in that early in that first quarter. You leave them open, they're going to hit that outside shot. Needham has a little bit of familiarity with Taunton in this tournament. They defeated the Tigers. 66 to 53 in the first round. That game was at Needham High School. The other bit of the bracket, New Bedford over Brookline in the first round, 84-78 before falling big to the Rockets. Rockton defeating Attleboro, 71-48 in the first round. Marshfield falling to Quincy, 64 to 58 before falling to the Boxers, 72-64. The other side was the really intriguing one. You get the Catholic Conference on that side of the bracket, along with a couple of public tools. Backdoor pass, instead kicks it out for three, is good. Wow. And that was Brandon Monheimer. Harris, corner, no good. A little bit too much on it. Now a long pass in for Cooper off the glass, blocked by Jalen Lee, and they're gonna call a goaltending here? Wait a minute, he hit he got to oh, the ball. Call, they call it offensive. Oh, offensive. Okay. All right. Because he touched the rim. Ram uh, the okay. backboard. That's great to say. Nivon Reed. Harris now over to Azor. Azor to Lee. Lee inside for Okinola. Down low to Reed, who was fouled from behind. Nice job by the boxers. Get around the horn and then get it inside to Reed. Nice job by Okendola to hold onto the ball. He's getting pushed out of bounds, but somehow he's able to wrap it around to a Reed on the pass. And Reed was ready to put it up. So the other side of the bracket, there's a lot of Metro West teams in the South sectional bracket this year. Mansfield over Newton South in the first game, 76-49, no surprise there. PC High over Wellesley, 54-42. Newton North over Braintree, 61-34 as Reed goes two of two. So Newton North over Braintree, and then the stunner. There's always one, Miles. Always. Bridgewater Raynham over Catholic Memorial, 62-55. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's March Madness, and this is what happens. Jalen Lee now in fast break, three on one, and Lee's gonna get called for the travel. The quarterfinals in that half of the bracket, Mansfield over BC High, 71 to 58. And Newton North over BR, 66 59. And Mansfield destroying the Tigers of Newton North by 20, 70 to 50 as Monheimer off the glass and in. 27 19, eight point edge for the Boxers. Jerese Harris, long three, this one short. And Needham comes away with it. Monheimer pump fake for three, steps inside the line, takes it on two, is good. Needham charging down by six as Shaughnessy falls into the bench with the ball, so it'll be a Brockton ball. And Dorian will come back in. Yeah, Shaughnessy's pretty fired up here. Rockets all of a sudden feeling it again from the outside. Brought it back to six point. Box a lead. Jerese the assassin Harris in for Marcus Azor. Azor spinning, going against three guys and this pass to Lee just off the mark. As Cooper's gonna come back in the game. He comes in for Jack Crookshank. Who the officials? This three, you gotta have a little more awareness. He was Standing at the check-in table for a little while. Hello. Montero's gonna come back in for Brockton. Shaughnessy 
overhands it to Monheimer. Monheimer step back. Three is good. Oh, oh, oh. whoa, he's Little feeling it. In your face for Brendan Monheimer. And a water bottle hit the floor. So we have a stoppage. 27-24, a single possession lead for the boxers. Glenn Darty, Montero come in, Reed and Jalen Lee come out. Sonny Oak and Lola to inbound it now for Brockton. Harris sending it in for Azor, tipped by Michael Clem, who's back into the game for the Rockets. Now over to Azor, a little bit too much on it. Montero back to Azor. Azor thought about the three, instead gives it back to Montero. His jump pass for Okinola. Good ball movement for the boxers. Juris Harris gets around his man long two. No good. Offensive board for Okinola to Azor, and he hits it just inside the charity strike for two. Okinola has bought his lunch pail this evening, and he is really fighting underneath for the rebounds. Nice job by Okinola. Marquis Dos Santos going to come into the game. Here's a three for the Rockets. No good. The crowd would have erupted if that went in. Now Junior Montero for the boxers. Montero overhand for Azor, his floater. This time no good. Glenn Darty tipping it as he fell to the floor, but William Doring picks up the loose ball. Two minutes to go in the first half. A three for Monheimer is short. Offensive board off the glass, but fouled was Shaughnessy. That's another one on... Glenn Darty. It's on Azor. Call it on Azor. So Crookshank's going to come back into the game for the Rockets. He replaces Clem. Dos Santos comes in for Harris. 2.02 to go in the first half, 29-24. Very fast-paced game here at Taunton High School. No good on his first attempt, does not earn the second. Azor for the boxers. Rockets gonna settle down here. They're, they're at their best when they control the pace of the game and it's not a very fast-paced shot-for-shot type game. Okanola down low, assaulted on his way up. Offensive foul, who are they gonna call for this one? Wow. They Glenn say, Darty yeah, and pushed, Armbar, who yeah, is not around anybody. He got the rebound. They're saying he pushed off to get the rebound. I don't know. It was a tough call for the boxes. Now a one-on-one -on -one situation. Will Cooper will do the honors for the Rockets. No good. Glenn Darty grabs the rebound. Azor to Dos Santos, his three is good! Big shot by Santos. Nice job coming off the bench cold and hits that big shot right there. 32-24, six, uh, eight point lead, excuse me, for the boxers. Now Shaughnessy pushing off against Montero, no call. Shaughnessy still with it. Now trying to get inside, spinning, travels, gives it to Monheimer. His three no good off both sides of the rim. And Glenn Darty with another board, having a huge game on the boards is Glenn Darty. Yeah, he's doing his job when he gets in there, get those rebounds. One minute to go in the half. Montero, three, short. Okinola grabbing the rebound over everybody. He takes a long two, no good. Glenn Darty under the hoop, off the glass, fouled on his way up. The shot didn't fall, but he'll be at the line for a couple of shots. Yeah, nice hustle by Glenn Darty. Stay in his area and fight for that rebound. Crookshank, call for the foul. There's 43.8 seconds to go, an eight point lead for the boxers. Navon Reed comes in for a little bit of size at the end of the first half. Glenn Darty, no good on his first attempt. Needham 
crowd comes alive. They haven't had a whole lot to cheer about in this first half. As Glenn Darty hits his second attempt. It's 33 to 24. Reed comes in for Glenn Darty. Now Cooper in for Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy off to Crookshank. Dos Santos tipping the ball to Montero, who couldn't corral before yeah, nice, falling out of bounds. Nice defense by uh, De Santos. Long pass complete to Dorian. Yeah, yes. box, boxes need to make, make the Rockets work for this shot. Shaughnessy, long three off the back of the rim. Rebound to Marcus Azor. Shot clock off. Yeah, nice, nice, smart move by Azor to hold up. Let's use some of this clock. Now 13 seconds left to Navon Reed, who rotates back to the top of the key. Five on the, on the clock now, over to Junior Montero. Three. Montero takes a long three. It's going to come off well short. Cooper comes down with the ball. The buzzer sounds. And we're at the end of the first half. It's a nine-point lead for the boxers. 33 to 24 miles. Fast-paced, action-packed first half. Yeah, very fast. And um, Needham High has done a good job with staying with the boxers as far as a fast-paced game. Needham has some very tough um, guards, Shaughnessy. And the other gentlemen, um, they just um, given the boxes a little fit, but the box has done great on defense. I think Needham was surprised how good the box's defense is at this moment. If you are the boxers, you're in a little bit of foul trouble. Glenn Darty with two, Oak and Lola with two. If you're the Rockets, you got to exploit that. Yeah, you do. I, I'm, I'm not sure how you can exploit. Well, as far as uh, Oak and Lola, you just get underneath and bang with them. But um, Azor with two fouls. Um, they really, he's not really in tough shape right now, but uh, I just see the box has got to come out with some tenacious defense in the second half, and they have to keep it up for two quarters. 33-24, your score at halftime. Brockton up by nine over the Needham Rockets in the South Sectional Semifinal with the winner going off to face Mansfield in the South Sectional Final. Brockton over Needham, 33-24 at halftime. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. Great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life.
Gordon and everything. slower pace yeah five four three two ladies gentlemen boys and girls basketball fans of all ages welcome back into taunton high school home of the tigers for second half action of the miaa south sectional semi-final between your brockton boxers and the needham rockets the two and the three seed going at it the boxes are technically the away team here. Needham's got the home crowd with them. And Brockton is wearing their away black jerseys, red trim around the white numbers. Azor for three, in and out. Oak and Lola offensive rebound, strong to the basket, no good. And coming down with it was Jack Crookshank. Needham, on the other hand, wearing their home white jerseys, gold trim around the navy blue numbers. It's 33 to 24, Brockton up by nine coming into the second half, and Miles, only two words can describe that first half. Fast paced. Very fast paced, very electrifying. Okandola there, he missed a golden opportunity to get a quick bunny. But great effort, just couldn't finish it. Talk about turning points. Needham was charging. Azor came up with a steal around half court. And a one-handed gym really set the pace of the boxers' offense in it, that first yeah, half. Yeah, it really set the tone for the boxers in that first half with that steal and um, thunderous dunk by the senior guard. Winner of this game has the honor to fight for the South sectional title against the 22 Mansfield Hornets as the first points of the half converted by Michaels Clem. Yeah, that was a cute play right there. Box has got to pay attention. Harris, three, in and out. Harris really needed, needed that shot just for his confidence. Three for Shaughnessy is good. 33-29, it's a four point lead now for the Boxers who have yet to score in the second half. Kaba, one handing over to Azor, now to Harris. Harris inside, back out to Kaba. Kaba gets around a couple of guys, backhanded shot, no good, Okinola tipping it. As Needham calls for over the back, they're not going to get that. Crookshank comes down with the loose ball, gives it over to Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy travels with it, but he's going to draw a foul. Wow, he was out of control and somehow got the call. Okinola called for the block. Timeout called by head coach Bob Bowen, his first of the game. And it's 33 29 with 6 out of 6 to go in the third quarter. Well, Needham Rockets came out, hit a couple of big shots. Boxers came out, missed a couple of big shots, and that's why the game's 33-29 right now. Needham's back in the hunt, trying to overtake these boxes. Boxers got to make some shots. Basically, right now, they just got to make some shots. Smiles, we've seen waves once again. Boxers pull away, they're up by 10, 12. Then they let the other team come charging back to within three or four. Is yeah, well, the same thing against Quincy? We we'll see it here again tonight. Exactly, well, Brockton's playing the number two seed. They're not the number two seed for anything. And they're showing their um, aggressiveness. A lot it, of people, I mean a lot of people wrote off this Needham Rockets team said the New Bedford Whalers under first year head coach Brian Rudolph are going to charge all the way and face Brockton for the right to play Mansfield in the title game. And then Needham went in and won by around 40 points. And I think New Bedford in that game heard everybody talking that they're going to come away with an easy victory and play down to their opponent. And as we saw, as Louis Charles hits a three from the corner. And Charles, he can hit that shot. He's been quiet all game. That's his first two from the outside, but he can light it up from outside. And that's what they need. Shaughnessy driving in, too much spin on it. Okinola comes down with the rebound, quickly off to Marcus Azor. 
Azor off the back of his heel, regaining his composure. Now over to Kaba, who pump fakes for three. Turns it over off of a block from Clem. And now the other way. Monheimer missed it. A couple putback attempts, and it's finally converted by Clem. Yeah, nice job by Clem. Holding his patience with the ball till the Brockton uh, defenders, both of them committed on the up fake, and then he had open um, clearance to put it up nicely off the backboard. Ball, moving on, ball movement on the outside for the boxes. Louis Charles driving inside. Draws the foul on Clint. Yeah, good decision by Charles to go into the, go into the paint, drive to the basket, try, try and draw a foul, and he did. Good on his first, making a five point ball game, 37-32. Playing down to your opponent typically has been the kiss of death. In any sport, we saw it even in soccer, the Brockton Boxers playing down to the long metal Lancers in the first half, going two nothing at halftime before they finally turned on the gas. New Bedford did it against these very same Rockets as here we go again, Marcus Azor all the way in. He's Where's the clear. foul? And they're finally okay. going to call it. I, I didn't hear the whistle. Well, Miles, <laughs> we're wearing headphones partly for yeah. air protection in this gym. It is, whew, this is a very loud yeah. building. Gee, it was nothing but body contact. I, excuse me, I just didn't hear the whistle. Nice job by Azor picking his pocket. He was going to go one-handed gym again. Yes, he, he was. Cried up. And uh, Shaughnessy knew it. And did that's not a, allow good, him. That's a good foul. Yeah, it was. It, it was a good foul by. You don't want Brockton coming away with that momentum again. Exactly. So he did the right thing using the body. Good on his first attempt. And two of two. Five of five now on the night for Marcus Azor at the line. Harris comes out for Dos Santos. Harris a little bit cold tonight. He's got four points. All from within the three-point arc. Typically, his best shooting comes from outside on the corner. Exactly. Shaughnessy one-handing it in as Plum is fouled. That's the second foul on Sonny Okinola. Good on his first attempt. Back to a seven point lead for the Boxers. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Clem missing his second attempt. Put back attempt, no good. Azor comes away with it this time. Marcus Azor charging full head of steam. Off the glass, counted in one for Marcus Azor. Coast to coast. Azor, nice job. Saw the clearing and took it right to the left side of the basket. Nicely put it off the glass and was fouled. That's been his signature move these past few games in the playoffs. A six footer taking charge here for the boxers. And he's six of six from the charity strike box. Yeah, uh, Azo is a good free throw shooter, especially in clutch time. Long three, no good. Louis Charles comes out with the rebound, but loses it. Loose ball on the floor, it's a scrum. Louis Charles comes away with it. That's the call, they're gonna give it to Brockton. I'm not sure a what loose, the call. A loose ball foul on Clem. Oh, kick ball. A kick ball. By number 11, the guard. That's Michael Clem, who has had a pretty good second half so far. Azor in for Oak and Lola. Oak and Lola strong Ooh, to the pocket. Nice. Behind the back, hook shot is good. Timeout Rockets, 3.51 to go in the third quarter. Brockton taking charge, 45 to 33 miles. It's a 12 point edge for the third seeded boxers. Yeah, I'm going old school on everybody out here, but that was a nice move. Oak and Lola remind me of old um, NBA pro back in the 70s, West Unsell for the Washington Bullets. 
nice thought move you were inside. Gonna, I thought you were going to go Kareem on that one. No, but only because uh, Okolola is a big, big kid. He's a big guy. And um, Wes Unsell was a big guy in the middle for the um, Baltimore. Actually, at the beginning, it was the Baltimore Bullets. Then they changed it to the Washington Bullets. But nice move by Okondola using the paint and using his body to perfection. Speaking of big men, <laughs> Shaq posted a highlight video on his Facebook page. He said, I'm the funniest big man ever. And it was all bloopers. You know, you, you can't argue with that. And Shaq's got quite the sense of humor. Of course, a very big influence on the life of seven-time award-winning director and producer, Nubi Rato. Who's in, who will, who's in the cloud, he'll, crowd tonight. He'll debate anybody that Shaq is the greatest basketball player of all time. Really? See, he's, he, he hasn't seen some of the old school players. He's just a youngster. To me, to be the best basketball player of all time, you're going to have the fundamentals down. And Shaughnessy gets a long three. Wow. To get the Rockets a little bit of momentum here. You're going to be well-rounded to be the best basketball player of all time. And for you to be purposely fouled because you can't hit free throws, yeah. tells me you're not well-rounded. Shaq could do two things. Three things. He could win tip-offs. He could lay it up from the paint. And he can get fouled. Shaughnessy now with the Rockets down by nine. Works his way in, throws it into the gut of Crookshank. No good. Cooper comes up with the ball. Louis Charles over everybody. Grabs the rebound, and now Azor full head of steam out to Dos Santos. Three block, but it went to Do uh, Louis Charles, and an offensive foul. Called on Amir Louis Charles. He gives the refs the stare down as Montero, Cardi Glenn, and Jalen Lee all come back into the game. Azor is going to get his first break. Yeah, Louis Charles comes out. I didn't quite see the, the offensive foul. I got kind of blocked there, but uh, I don't know. This is Dorian off the inbounds pass. Almost committing a five-second violation there. Took a very long time to get across the half-court line. Now tipped by Abu Kaban to the net. So, it's now a seven-point ball game, 45-38. Montero with it for the boxes. He's got a couple of triples from beyond the arc. Dos Santos looking for his second. It's good! That's a big shot right there. Dos Santos coming off the bench again, hitting a big three-pointer. Needham's coach Paul Liner looking up to the Raptors' hands on his head after that one. You can't defend everybody from beyond the arc is his thought. Now Shaughnessy with it. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. To Cooper at the charity strike. Cooper working his way in, puts it off the glass, no good. Offensive rebound to Clem, but Abu Kaba with a very athletic move to Dos Santos. He nice. puts it off the glass and in. Nice defense by Abu Kaba, and then had the Talk sense Talk about the... the move as he was falling to the ground, yes. sending it behind his back had up to Dos Santos. Exactly, had the basketball sense to get it forward because he saw his his teammate already shooting down the court. Shaughnessy short. Glenn Darty comes up with the rebound. 90 ticks to go in the third quarter. 12 point edge for the boxers. Junior Montero with it for Brockton. Yep. Boxer smartly bring it back out top. In for Abu Kaba, just inside the three point line. Works his way in. Fouls. The shot did not fall. Glenn called for his third. He's going to be replaced by Monheimer. And Adam Frundlich, the senior guard, getting ready to come back in as well. Clem comes out, as well as Matthew Smith. 107 to go in the third quarter. 12 point edge, Abu Kaba looking to make it 13 and does just that. Box has got to clamp down on defense. 
they've got a little cushion, and you don't want to lose the cushion that you have. Shaughnessy, three, good. Tough competitor right there, Shaughnessy. He's doing it all. 10-point edge for the boxers, 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. Montero gets around, Shaughnessy now spinning, kicks it out to Jalen Lee. Lee thought about driving baseline, gets it back to Montero. Now Brockton slowing up, back to Lee. 30 seconds to go, Lee kicks it all the way out to Dos Santos. Thought about the quick three, instead, the oh! first layup is good! And a little stare down for Marquise Dos Santos. Dos Santos puts enough spin on the ball. I don't know how he got it up there with all the big men around him, but somehow he put enough spin on it and it dropped nicely into the basket. Montero hits the floor and they're gonna go to Shaughnessy, hit the end line. Yeah, that was great defense by Montero. Forced Shaughnessy to dribble it just out of bounds. Reed comes in for Lee, 10 seconds to go. Shot clock is off here in the third quarter. 12 point edge for the boxes. It would be huge if they could extend that by even a couple going into the fourth quarter. Junior Montero with five to go to Abu Kalu who can't handle it. And Needham takes over with 3.3 to go. Yeah, you hate to see you make a big defensive play, get the ball right back, and um, then you just give it right back to the opponent. Half court shot by Shaughnessy. Oh, it oh, looks oh, good. Oh. Shaughnessy doing it all for the, the Rockets and almost electrifying the crowd at the end of the third quarter. Wow. It is 53 to 41, 12 point edge for the boxers. Miles, talk about the contributions and the momentum shift given to the boxers by the 5'10 junior Marquis Dos Santos. Yeah, Dos Santos, he's, this is the second time he's come in and just added a spark to this. Uh, boxer team that needed it and this bench has really come through for the boxers so far this evening as well as uh, Needham's bench is uh, hung in there too. So we've got a real boxing match going on here in this um, south sectional semifinal. Let's look ahead a little bit. Say the boxers cruise to victory here. They face the 20 and 2 top seeded Mansfield Hornets. What are you looking forward to in that matchup as the boxers have fallen to the Hornets two years in a row? Yeah, I'm looking for the boxers. If, if they can get by the uh, Needham Rockets, I'm looking for the boxers in, in that championship game to really come out hungry for, for a win. I mean, I'm sure they don't want to go out of the um, championship game with a third loss to the, to the same team they've lost to recently in a um, playoff game. So uh, I'm sure they'll come out very hungry if they can get by this Needham Rockets team. And that's what they're focusing in on right now. Will not be a family affair this time for Coach Bob Bowen, his nephew Max Bowen, the senior last year, leading the Hornets to a huge victory against the boxers. Dorian, three, good. Back to single digits. A nine point lead for the boxers, 53 to 44. Dos Santos out to Navon Reed. Reed to Montero. Over to Dos Santos. Dos Santos normally playing garbage time minutes, but certainly has earned playing time here tonight. Three on the shot clock is Montero shot hit the rim. Fresh shot clock. Abu Kaba coming away with it. All the way across to Reed. Reed fouled, not called on the putback attempt. Abu Kaba grabs it off the rim and puts it off the glass and in. Yeah, that should have been a foul called on Reed. He was hammered and no call. Luckily, Brockton Box is hung in there and Kaba put the uh, two back in. Man, I see a lot of elbows by the uh, Rockets as they carry the dribble of basketball. Dorian three is good. It's Haymaker for Haymaker here in the fourth quarter, 55-47. Brockton trying to hold on and even pull away a little bit with six and a half minutes to go in the South Sectional Semifinal. Montero loses it behind his back, regains composure enough to get smacked in the face. No uh, where's the foul? Reed is fouled on his way up and will be at the line for a couple of shots. The refs are calling him Miles, but not yeah. when they should be. Yeah, exactly, I mean, that was, Good thinking by Reed. He got the ball in traffic and smartly went right to the basket for a shot and got fouled. Now it's go time for the boxers. Okanola and Azor 
First coming back into the game, Azor, the boxers leading scorer here tonight. Dos Santos comes out as well as Tejon Glendardi. Clem comes back in for the Rockets. And he will replace Adam Frundling. Second attempt, 56-47, back to a nine-point lead for the boxers. Shaughnessy by far the MVP for the Rockets. Off to Dorian, who was caught fighting the last couple of minutes. Now Dorian, a third straight three, this one no good. Kaba grabbing the rebound, out of play off of Brandon Monheimer. over to Junior Montero. Montero overhead pass. I think it was intended for Abu Kaba, instead finds the Brockton bench. Yeah, a little miscommunication right there on the offensive end for the boxes. Shaughnessy to Dorian. Dorian driving baseline, puts up a short two, no good. Okinola with the rebound, but throws it off of Clem out of play, so Brockton will have a chance to have a fresh inbounds. Yeah, Clem got his hands on the uh, inbounds pass and uh, almost got, got a steal. Azor and Shaughnessy. Now Navon Reed over to Montero. Montero loses it. Kaba picks it up, has to regain composure. 10 on the shot clock, Kaba driving inside and he's called for the travel. Tough break right there for Kaba. He fought for the ball, got it back, went to the hole, and um, referee said he traveled and he made the shot. Five minutes to go in the fourth quarter of the MIAA South Sectional Semifinal. This will be out of playoff of Clem Brockton inbound. Gee, I thought Clem came across um, Kaba's arm. It should have been, I thought, a foul. Aggressive um, play by. Needham's trying a semi-press, semi-zone. Now Cabo over to Junior Montero, who finds some space. Floater from the charity stripe, no good. Oak and Lola fouled on his way on the putback attempt, and he'll be at the line after coming down hard. Yeah, that was yeoman effort by Oak and Lola, and he was pushed underneath. Okanola, good free throw shooter. And Shane called for his third. They're going to say no, not a not shooting sh foul? What? Unbelievable. On a putback attempt when he was in midair. Unbelievable. Well, all right. I've just about seen it all. Navon Reed, three, no good. The rebound to Clem. Clem to Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy, full head of steam. Oh, and come on. on. He had it. On Azor. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. A Azor had the position. They're gonna Shaughnessy came in wildly, and they're going to give it to him. They're going to say it's on Darty Glenn, who's oh. not even on the floor right now. So they got the numbers screwed up on that one. It's Marcus Azor. Seven point ball game. Azor called for the double dribble here. Yeah, he did. Uh, he kind of held it there for a second, dribbling it, and that, and that is a uh, carry. Cooper in for Kirkshank, and Brockton is rightly going to call a timeout here with 4.23 to go. In regulation, it's 56 to 49. Brockton up by seven miles. The Rockets are getting ready to launch. Yeah, and um, I hope the coach is telling, his, telling the boxers, look, you can't make mistakes now in crunch time. You see you're not getting calls, so you're going to have to do it on your own. No mistakes, because you can't make mistakes in crunch time 
and the way the game is going right now, Needham has a little momentum going, and uh, Brockton just needs to execute a little bit better. 56 to 49, your score, Brockton up by seven. Just shy of halfway through the fourth quarter with the winner going on to face the 20 and two Mansfield Hornets in the South sectional final for the right to the state tournament. Something in which Brockton would love to see if you're the boxers dual state titles this year, men's soccer and basketball, if it should so happen. Cooper loses it out of play off of Azor. Yeah, that's a big break for the Rockets. Brockton had the good defense on him. Shaughnessy inbounding it to Cooper. Over to Clem. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Now Shaughnessy working against Azor. Down low for Clem, backdoor pass, no good. And an offensive foul called on Clem, his fourth. Wow, that was a golden opportunity, miss right there for the Rockets. You don't see that that often in this basketball game. Rockets blowing an easy bunny right underneath, and uh, Clem knows it. And this is huge for the boxers. They are now in a one and one bonus situation with just about halfway through the fourth quarter. Clem will come out with his four personal fouls and he is very frustrated. Yeah. Kawa hits his first turn in the second. 4.05 to go and Brock. What? Did what they call lane violation here? That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Shot doesn't count. 56-49, the Boxers lead remains at seven. As Montero steamrolls Shaughnessy from behind. He went down hard. Yeah, actually, they, they, he's got his feet tripped up with the, uh, and there was a little contact. But the feet was what made him trip him. Might not trip be up. the worst thing for the boxes if Shaughnessy hits the floor a few more times. Yes. Cooper for a long two is Ooh, good. Nice shot by Cooper. He had guys on him and he still made the shot. Five point ball game, 345 to go here in the fourth quarter. Junior Montero slowing the pace for the boxes. Over to Abu Kaba and for Oak and Lola. Okanola to Azor, his three is a little bit off the mark. And another offensive foul committed by the boxers. I don't know. What to see, who to call it. They're gonna call him Abu Kaba. They're gonna get Okanola. Okanola, excuse me. Whatever the heck. I, I don't That's know. Okanola out, out jumped the guy. I didn't see a lot of contact. Just a tough call on the big man. Three and a half to go. It's a five point lead now for the Boxers. They've led by as many as 13. Oh, where's the, the elbow? Okinola and Montero able to recover to Glenn Darty is left. No good. Fighting for the rebound as Dorian gets fallen on by Okinola and somehow able to stay in bounds of the Rockets. Three minutes to go. Shaughnessy, long three, short. Darty with the rebound to Okinola. Looking for the alley-oop over to, to Montero, instead lays it up and in. That was a great job by Ogunlola to avoid the contact when he was driving to the basket. Big seven, bucket by the boxers on that. Seven point lead for the boxers. Needham's gonna call a timeout here, 58 to 51. 2.45 to go in the fourth quarter. This has been We've seen waves bigger than the bomb cyclone over the weekend. Yeah, I tell you, I got butterflies in my stomach right now. Just too close to call. Boxes, even though they're up by seven, 245 left, they cannot let down on the defense. And hopefully this game can be called fairly in these last two minutes and 45 seconds of this semifinal game here at uh, Totten High. Winner goes on to face Mansfield in the South sectional title game here at Totten on Friday night, 7.45, a late tip off in that one. 
If it's the Boxers, we'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. If it's the Rockets, well, we'll see you at Doyle's on Friday night. The Boxers looking to get back to the South Sectional title game for the first time in a handful of years. The Rockets looking to shut up the doubters that said they couldn't get past the New Bedford Whalers. This is William Dorian who's had a couple of threes tonight. Over to Shaughnessy, Shaughnessy for three, no good. Glenn Darty with the rebound being assaulted underneath the basket, gets it to Ali Kaba, now to Marcus Azor. 2.20 to go in the fourth quarter. Kaba to Azor, Azor goes up and down with it, and called for the travel. And Coach Bob Bowen saying, yeah, yeah, you, you did that one. Yeah, he, I guess you could call that a little up and down. Good defense by Shaughnessy. Cooper hands off to Shaughnessy, who's being worked on by Junior Montero. Cooper sets the pick. Shaughnessy finds some open space, gives it to Monheimer, who's got a couple of threes. Back to Shaughnessy, top of the key. Travels against Azor, not called. Takes a three oh, and hits oh. it. Little in your face wow. on Marcus Azor, and it's a four-point ball game. A little shake and bake. Montero to Glenn Darty down low. Should have taken the three. Instead gives it to Abu Kaba. Kaba to Azor as Montero's calling for it again. Now Azor driving inside. Overhands it to Glenn Darty off the glass. Counted and one. Put this on Glenn Darty with a minute 40 to go. The boxers are back up by six. And Glenn Darty a chance to make it seven. That was a big shot by Glenn Darty. He did a nice job. Put the ball back on the floor when he got the pass had two guys on him, somehow he was able to control the dribble and put it nicely back up for two and got fouled in the process. Krebs gonna come back into the game for Needham. He's got four personal fouls. He replaces Jack Crookshank. Seven point ball game, 61-54. This game far from over, 90 ticks to go here in the fourth quarter. Shaughnessy, the MVP of the Rockets by far. To Dorian, he takes a three that was blocked away by Azor. Now up to Junior Montero, 125 to go. Montero loses it, gets it back, able to tiptoe along the baseline. And now a whistle and a stoppage in a timeout called by the boxers, 120 to go. Yeah, and I think Coach Bones a little upset. I think he wanted Montel to bring the ball back out. You got a minute, 20, 30 seconds on the clock. Bring it back out, use Plenty some of, of that time clock. On the shot clock. Yeah, bring some of that time. He was trying to go um, two on, one on two, and he was lucky enough to get that ball back. 61 to 54. <laughs> this game has been about as back and forth as you can get without ever, I think, actually being tied. See, and I don't see a, sh a 30 second shot clock. But there it is right there, 23 seconds. The boxes have, they should try to use some of this. They should use about yes. 20 of that. Exactly, with, with only one minute, 20 seconds left, you've got a seven point lead here in the fourth quarter. So the clock is in your favor at the moment. 120 to go to decide who will face Mansfield in the South sectional title game. Boxers up by 7, 61 to 54. With the ball in 23 seconds on the shot clock, they could bring it down to 57 seconds left in the game before putting up a shot. Montero, Azor, Okinola, Glenn Darty, and Cobb on the floor for the Boxers. In for Okinola over to Glenn Darty. Yes! Oh, slam! Yes! Glenn Darty with the slam! Yes! Glenn Darty with the Yes! Wow, great passing by the boxers there to find the open man and Darty with the exclamation point. Shaughnessy three, no good. Okinola immediately fouled by Clem. Wow. And Clem has fouled out of this game. That was clutch, clutch half court offense by the Brockton boxers. They had a trap defense on them. They somehow got the ball out to the outside, worked it around the horn. Got it inside to Glenn Darty, and he was ready for the pass underneath and nicely put it in for the exclamation point on the dunk. And some of these Needham fans are starting to walk out of here. Mad Dog. Wagons. It's a full minute left. 
this game far from over. I, th I think we'll see a few more haymakers before one of these teams is finally knocked out. Well, it's an 11 point lead with one minute left on the clock. Rock is gonna have to hit some outside shots quickly and then foul quickly. They've got the guys to do it. Shaughnessy loses it to Azor and Brockton will bleed this down to about 30 seconds. And Azor smartly holds the ball up, takes some more time off this clock. He picked somebody's pocket. Shaughnessy called for the elbow. And finally, they, they call that elbow. He's been throwing it all evening against the Brockton defenders with that elbow. Nothing's been called. Very aggressive with the ball. He is very hard to contain, but the boxers have done it this evening in the South sectional semifinals. Azor 7 of 7 now at the free throw line. Perfect on the night. And he makes it 8 of 8. 67 to 54, this game all but over. 13 point edge. A long three is Needham's just going to hawk it up. Calva comes down with the rebound over to Azor. Is Needham's trying to foul, but they're failing miserably. They get it back. Will Cooper off to Shaughnessy. 32 seconds to go. 27 on the shot clock. Needham's going to hawk up a bunch of threes. Shaughnessy hits one from the top of the key. And an immediate timeout by Coach Paul Weiner. 10 point edge, 23 seconds to go. And Coach Bowen's gone out of his mind. 10 point edge, 23 seconds to go. This one, I think just a little bit out of reach for the Rockets, but Miles, this has been one hell of an inter entertaining basketball game here in Taunton. Yeah, and again, the Boxers hopefully will come out of this alive because of their defense in the end and clutch play, clutch defense in the last five minutes of this basketball game to really put them on a path to the um, to the uh, Eastern, Re excuse me, South sectional finals. So it'll be a rematch in the third straight year that the boxers will play the Hornets in the South sectional tournament. Boxers looking for a little bit of redemption. And this will be the first year that that game is not at the Hornets nest. Abu Kalva fouled and it's now a double bonus situation for the boxers. So they'll shoot two with 18.6 to go. Adam Frundlich going to come back into yeah, the game. That's five on Shaughnessy, so he's out of there. That's five. And that's, that's about as big of a loss as you can have. Yeah. The leading scorer of the Rockets. Team motivator. And um, he's, he's gone for the evening. He definitely came with his A game this evening on Mad Dog. So Clement Shaughnessy, two starters have fouled out. As Montero gives the crowd the old, let's get noisy, we're headed to the South Sectional title game. Some garbage time minutes here for Todd Robinson and number 34, James Nichols, who are JV call-ups. They'll play 18.6 seconds here in this one. And Kaba hits both. Kaba is good on both. The long three for Dorian's good. Ten seconds to go and counting now. Eight, Robinson to Azor, who's just going to hold it for the final four. You're not really going to foul here, are you? Dorian tried. The buzzer sounds, and the boxers are headed off to the south sectional title game against Mansfield. Technically an upset of the higher seeded Needham Rockets, Miles. They win by nine, 69 to 60, your final score from Tom. Well-deserved win for the boxers this evening. They beat the number two seed. They were the number three seed. They just played great defense the whole game, basically. Played great defense, over overcame some of these calls, and just came out of here determined to go to the uh, South Sectional Championship. Miles, there were a lot of waves, but where, were, where was the turning point of the game for the boxers? I think the turning point of the game for the boxers is when uh, Azor stole the ball in that fourth quarter. And actually near the end there where they passed around and then Glenn Darty got the, got the dunk to really seal the victory for the boxers. Basically, it was just a great defensive effort. As far as MVP or the person who really stood out today 
for the boxes. I think it was Oak and Lowell. Third straight year, we're gonna see the Mansfield Hornets in the South sectional title game. We've seen them previously in earlier rounds. What are you looking forward to in that game? I'm just looking forward to a great defensive battle, especially the boxes gotta come focused and play some great, great defense like they've had all, all playoff year, um, all as far as the playoffs go. They've been playing great defense. Again, MVP for the boxes, I believe, is Oak and Lola for his great effort underneath. He came with the lunch pail today to fight and claw underneath, got hammered quite a number of times. The front line just did a great job underneath. Oak and Lola, um, Abu Kaba, Glenn Darty, they all did a great job this, uh, this evening. Well, let's go hear from Coach Bob Bowen on his thoughts on today's game and looking forward to the game against Mansfield. Marquis, outstanding. You know, he's like our 11th man. He works so hard in practice, in some games he barely plays. He gets four or five minutes. He had two big threes tonight and uh, two big layups. And uh, Amir Louis Charles, I yelled at him in the timeout that he better get the ball and shoot it. That was his job. And the next play, I think it was, he got in the corner, he made that three. And then he made a good aggressive drive, too. Yeah, we've got better shooters than people think sometimes. And we, we had a great night foul shooting, didn't we? We really shot the ball well. We're a real good shooting team. You know, some people are surprised at that because we're so pounding the boards and pressing people. But we are a very good shooting team this year. I knew we were going to be very, very good. Yeah, I right away I, I saw that we had a potential to be in the mix for the state championship. We're big, we can shoot, we've got two good solid point guards. Yeah, I thought right away that we were gonna have a run this year. Coach, talk about the performance of Marcus Azor tonight, he had a huge game. Marcus, again, took control of the game. He's so calm and so collected out there. And he had a couple of big, big baskets today too. A Couple of steals and turned into dunks yes. with explanation points. Talk about the defensive pressure you put on the Rockets tonight and how that kind of led to the offensive side of the floor. Well, you know, the, we defensive pressure was good. Those steals were nice. But number 21 is one of the best players in the state. He averages about 25 points a game. And I thought Junior and Marcus did an outstanding job on him. He got a lot of points, but he had to work real hard for them, and he had to shoot a lot of shots to get them. Slugfest, we talked about the Waves last game against Quincy, where they started to charge back down by four or five points. Saw it again here tonight with the Rockets down by three or four. How'd you stem the tide of those? We ran our offense. We ran some plays to stem the tide. That, that was the difference. We, when they got it down to four, we ran a good play and got a good shot and a good basket. So you guys saw Mansfield play last night, destroying Newton by, I think, 40, the final sure. score of that game. Your nephew's on the team again, yeah. only a freshman this year. Let's talk about what you're looking forward to on that matchup Friday night. Well, I mean, yeah, last night they played fabulous. They did everything right. They moved, we, are, we knew that. They moved the ball well. Uh, they've got good shooters. They've got a couple of guys who are real strong scorers. But we had a good game down at their place. We really thought we should have beaten them at their place. So we're glad to see them again. What are your final thoughts on tonight's game? Well, we just played fantastic, fantastic. We controlled the game much more than I thought we would control the game. Coach, thank you. We'll see you on Friday night. Very good. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our camera guys, Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton, Katya Andrade, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you in the self-sectional title game right here at Taunton Friday night, 7.45 tip-off at Taunton High School. Thanks for watching.